From KPU News in Austin, you're watching Texas This Week with Ashley Goodo. Good morning. The saga with Texas Speaker of the House Dennis Bonin seemingly reached a conclusion this week. Let's get right to the three things you need to know in Texas politics. In case you forgot, the Republican speaker came under fire after the CEO of Empower Texans, Michael Quinn Sullivan, released an audio recording of a conversation he had with Bonin where he offered Sullivan media credentials with access to the House floor in exchange for Sullivan campaigning against a list of fellow Republicans in 2020. The recording came out just days before the House Republican Caucus held its retreat in Austin and afterwards, support for Bonin amongst lawmakers started to dwindle. And this week, Bonin announced he will not seek re-election in 2020. As the Bonin Sullivan drama unfolded, the House General Investigating Committee asked the Texas Rangers to investigate the incident to see if any laws were broken. They turned their findings over to the Brazoria County DA. Two days after the speaker announced he won't seek re-election, the DA announced the investigation was complete and there wasn't enough evidence to charge him with bribery or solicitation of a gift by a public servant. But she had plenty to say, calling his actions repugnant, offensive, and lacking in character. And it's time to vote, Texas. There's one week left of early voting ahead of the November 5th election. We've put together a series explaining the propositions on the ballot. You can find them at kvu.com slash vote Texas. If you don't follow Texas politics closely, you may not realize just how significant the news with Speaker Bonin is, but this is a pretty big deal. A secret recording created a rift among Republicans in the Texas House of Representatives. Now, I've requested numerous interviews with Speaker Bonin, but have been told he has no media availability. So I sat down with the other man at the center of this scandal, the CEO of Empower Texans, Michael Quinn Sullivan. Michael, thank you for joining us this morning. Absolutely, great to be with you. You know, tell us a little bit. We kind of want to rehash just a moment about why you went into this meeting with Speaker of the House Dennis Bonin recording. Um, well, we went into the meeting because Speaker Bonin invited me to uh, to meet with him. Um, there were things that had been one that Speaker Bonin had done during the legislative session at the state hall, where he lied completely and totally about the actions activities around a Second Amendment activist uh, that DPS footage uh, demonstrated conclusively that Speaker Bonin had lied about that. Um, and there were some things that Bonin had said that had me concerned. Uh, and so I needed to protect myself, just really not knowing what to expect out of the meeting. Uh, realized that I needed to, uh, to to at least have a record to defend myself in the future should it be necessary. And just so our, our viewers are aware, not that they haven't seen this <laughs> all over the place, remind us what exactly happened in that meeting. So in that meeting, uh, I, I expected um, it to be somewhere on the spectrum of a um, you know tongue lashing for uh, my writers not being sufficiently supportive of Speaker Bonin and the Republican majority or some sort of plea for you know, GOP unity ahead of 2020, or you know, some mixture of the two. Uh, what instead I was confronted with was the Speaker of the House offering uh, my organization, my reporters, uh, media credentials in exchange for uh, my, uh, my t doing political dirty work for him, essentially, targeting his opponents, withholding spending against him, those sorts of things, completely um, uh, unexpected. And so this conversation then happens, but you decided to write about it rather than to keep it a private conversation between you, Speaker Bonin, and Dustin Burroughs, who at the time was the chair of the GOP caucus. Well, well first, I actually did try to handle it privately. I sent a letter uh, to Speaker Bonin and, uh, and to Representative Burroughs saying, this is what I heard. I'm not going to participate in a quid pro quo arrangement. Um, not just not going to do it. Um, Speaker Bonin's uh, reply was a fairly heated and deceitful reply. And then we got word he was bad mouthing us around. I think kind of setting the stage for being worried I might talk about it publicly. And that's when I decided that we did need to talk about it publicly. I needed to defend myself, defend my organization and my family and my staff against the things that Speaker Bonin was and was going to continue to be saying about us. So why even send that initial letter? Why just say, yeah, he put this offer on the table, I'm just not going to take it, we're going to walk away? Well, first, um, you know, look, I was, I was there first as the, as the CEO of a, of a company, um, and that I think it's always important to be very clear in your responses. Mm -hmm. um, I think that 
that, um, you know, on just kind of the, the good ethics as a Christian. I believe that, you know, whenever you feel wrong, you first need to talk to the person, uh, you know, first and foremost. And that, um, and so that was what that was an attempt to do. Um, also, look, sometimes people say things. Sometimes people say things and either they don't mean them or they get caught up in the moment or whatever it might be. And I felt like I owed it to, you know, to, to the honorably elected Speaker of the Texas House. Um, to uh, to give him the opportunity to say he, he even even look frankly even if he intended to, uh, to 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 make the quid pro quo offer as is now clearly apparent um, at least give him an honorable way to to back out of it um, he chose not to he chose to take a path of deceit and lies and doubling down um, rather than um, rather than taking an ethical approach. Last week, you released that recording for everyone to hear. The timing of that release, intentional. Yeah, yes, intentional in that um, you know wanted to make sure that this uh, this audio, it's an hour and four minutes. Folks can still still go to TexasScorecard.com, one of our websites, and hear the full audio. Uh, it's uh, um, uh, one hour and four minutes long. Um, and there's the there's the certainly the quid pro quo talk, but then there's the kind of political gossip and. Uh, Bonin engages in the locker room, talks some salacious stuff um, that, you know, quite frankly, I don't think um, improve the public discourse, quite frankly. Um, and so I was not overly interested in playing into the, into the lowering of public standards. Uh, but if the audio was going to be released, and I had the governor, the lieutenant governor, the Republican Party chair, and others saying, release the audio. Um, and so I'd say, well, if I'm going to have to release it, if I need to release it, I'm going to release it when people can do something about it. And that's the Republican caucus of the Texas House. They unanimously made him their nominee for speaker. They elected him unan unanimously as speaker. And so the caucus was meeting last week for their retreat. And that became the opportunity uh, for them to do something rather than just put it out there for the salaciousness of it, release it when, when it might matter. All right. So they met, they came out and condemned uh, that audio recording Monday night. We all got an email from some top Republicans in the House saying that the speaker no longer had uh, their support. And Tuesday morning, an email that took many of us by surprise, the speaker of the House saying he would not seek reelection in 2020 and therefore not seek reelection as speaker of the House. What is your reaction to this? Is this what you wanted? Uh, I, look, I, this, this is a, we should not mistake, this is a sad thing for Texas. Um, public corruption, uh, lack of public ethics, those are not things to rejoice about. When a member of the legislature has to resign in disgrace, that's not a good thing. Um, what is a good thing, though, is that there's now the opportunity for all of us as citizens, for the people of Texas to have um, meaningful conversations with each other and with our elected officials, um, sort of resetting the clock about what we expect out of our elected officials, about the kind of conduct, about you know, how much variance we're willing to tolerate between what they say in private and do in public and vice versa. Um, I think that you know, th that should be the good thing that comes out of it. Now, there's still you know, a, lot of, a lot of ground to cover. He did not resign his office. He, he announced he's not seeking reelection. Um, so there, there's still a little, bit, a little bit of a mess to clean up, still a little bit of stench hanging in the air that Republicans, uh, because Republicans politically control the state, um, at least right now, um, they're going to have to figure out how to navigate the next um, 13 months until the November 2020 election and demonstrate that they can clean house, that they can govern with integrity and with ethics, um, even with Dennis Bonin still hanging around apparently. You're giving me great answers, but you aren't answering the question I asked uh -oh. you, which is, uh, is this what you wanted? Uh, no, I don't think it is what I wanted. Um, I think that you know what I what I hoped was that you know that that letter I sent to Dennis Bonin on, on June 29th, I think it was June 27th, um, that Dennis Bonin would reply and say, "Man." I am sorry. If that's what you heard, that's not what I intended. That's what I wanted to have happen. I wanted when we, after waiting a month, um, uh, wrote about it publicly, it would have been better for Dennis Bonin to have recanted and say, you know what, 
I probably did say something stupid in that meeting, and I am sorry. Uh, we should never be trading government services for actions that benefit politicians individually. Um, that, that, was a, that was a wrong thing to do, and I'm sorry, I'm going to do better. That's what I wish had happened. That would have been better for the people of Texas. It would have been better for the reputation of the Lone Star State. Uh, the fact that Dennis Bonin is, um, is stepping down is now probably the, the least good, good result out of this, I guess. Um, but you know, what, what I hope in, in, in all cases these things point to is for us to remember that as citizens, it's our job to hold our elected officials accountable. It's our job to not tolerate public corruption. And now, the last word. The next time you're in Las Vegas, consider taking a trip to Fremont Street, Old Vegas. You know, the original strip isn't just home to cheap tables and more affordable drinks. It's also steps away from a gym called the National Museum of Organized Crime and Law Enforcement, better known as the Mob Museum. And this is not your average museum. You will be mesmerized by the 41,000 square feet of interactive exhibits and history about made men. While their lifestyles were... Uh, these men did have some wisdom of sorts. And as we watch the fall of Texas Speaker of the House, Dennis Bonin, words from the Teflon Don, John Gotti, came to mind. He said, quote, don't ever say anything you don't want played back to you someday. There are people who believe State Representative Dennis Bonin had quite the political future ahead of him. He's only 47 years old, and during his first term as Speaker, worked to pass monumental bills that could change the trajectory of Texas. He wasn't just a rising star in the Republican Party. He was one of the big three. But his recorded words and what he thought was a private meeting came back to haunt him and his future political aspirations, at least for now. This episode makes it clear we're living in a new age, in an age where everybody's got a smartphone and those smartphones have recorders. Make no mistake, I'm not trying to romanticize John Gotti. He was not a good guy. But he did have at least one piece of good advice. That's the last word, and this has been Texas This Week.